What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus, and I want to welcome you to the Shine Life family. You need to refuse this inadequacy syndrome. This is what we're going to talk about in today's daily devotional. Stop looking down on yourself. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks about you, it doesn't matter what anyone says about you. Stop relating to God from an inadequate place. And this is what we're going to discuss. How about this mentality where we are always inadequate, where we always fall short, where we always try to please God. We're going to learn more about this and learn how to know who we are as Christians, what does God expect of us, and how to walk in the light of His Word. So without further ado, stick around, don't go anywhere. This is going to bless you tremendously. And I want to pray with you at the end of this video. We're going to be praying especially for 15 minutes following a global day of prayer thorn with pastor chris so stick around don't go anywhere so without further ado i hope all is well with you and your family let's get into the scriptures today's title like i said we're talking about refuse the inadequacy syndrome our theme scripture is taken from the book of john chapter 4 and verse 4. i'll read this and then we can break down the scripture discuss this word together so let's get into it it says, ye, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's First John 4.4. 4. There's so much inadequacy syndrome amongst many in the church. It has lasted so long that it now looks and sounds normal. For example, you hear such statements as, Feel me, Lord, I'm hungry for you. They think that the more they cry about their hunger for God, the quicker He'll respond to them. But such declarations are inconsistent with the Word, with who we are and what we have in Christ. And this is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about our place in Christ. What does God think about us? What has He done for us? Because if we're not careful, we could be asking God for things He already done. We could be crying for things we already have. We could be crying for him to make us who we already are. You know, it's like, so for example, did, uh, I think I did a video uh, several days ago, uh, I can't remember, several days ago, about how Jesus talked about out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then you, there's a song, I think there's a popular song that goes, oh, I thirst for you, I long for you, Lord, or something like that. So if we're not careful, you might hear, we might be listening in songs and those songs are confessions. And the thing about songs, they always stick with your mind. So you are singing songs about, they could be beautiful songs, you know, and they move your emotions. It's like, oh my God, that song is beautiful. It's like, oh God, oh Jesus, I'm reaching for you. I long for you, Jesus. And you're a Christian. It's not a right song to sing because you're not, how are you reaching for Jesus and you receive Jesus? Are you uh, reaching for Jesus? Might be, might be, it's the right person to sing that song is someone that's not born again. But if you're a Christian and you're born again, you cannot be thirsty for God. You can't be hungering for God. Oh, Lord, I hunger for you. What's, <laughs> what's that song? It might be innocent, but it is not scriptural. And if you if you want in one in one instance, you're confessing God's word, saying one thing, and in singing other songs that are contradic contrary to what God says about you, it is not right. He says, out of your belly shall flow rivers. You can't thirst no more. If you want to thirst, the well, the well, Jesus said, he has put his well in your heart. The well is in you. How can you hunger? Jesus said, he's the bread of heaven that came from heaven. The bread of life that came from heaven. Let me show you this scripture, actually. So I'm reading the book of John chapter 7 and verse 37. It says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Let's stop there for a minute. This was when Jesus was walking the earth. He had not died. He was still with the Jewish man walking the earth. He didn't go to the cross. He didn't die for anyone's sin. So for someone right there to say, Lord, I thirst for you, that is 100% correct. For someone to say, Lord, I hunger for you, that is correct. Because Jesus says this, if any man thirst, let him come on to me and drink. So whoever was thirsty, whoever wanted, he says, come to me and drink. And then he's from verse 38, he says, He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this is speak of the Spirit, which they that believe on him 
should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Did you see that? It says those that believe in him should receive. Before he died on the cross, no one had received the Holy Spirit. So people could thirsty for him, could hunger for him. He says, come and drink. But he says, after you believe on him, you out of your belly, within your spirit, the Holy Ghost will come in and dwell in you and you fill you with the rivers of living water. So now you can't say, Lord, I'm hungry for you, I thirst for you. You're wrong because if you are born again, you believe in him, out of your belly is already the, the well. The well is in your in your spirit. He has actually put the well of let me let me share this another scripture. Let's let's look in another scripture, right? So I'm in the book of John. This is gonna be a little bit of long long, blah, long read. So John chapter four, verse seven. He says, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. So Jesus is in the well, chilling out. This lady comes to take some water from the well. Jesus asks her, Give me some water. For his disciples are gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it thou that being a Jew asketh, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. He's like, why are you talking to me? Like, you, you don't... <laughs> hey, that's right. Jesus answered and said, Jesus answered and said unto her, if you look at this now, look at this. If, if thou knewest the gift of God, who is the... The gift of God is usually... The Spirit of God is always referred to as the gift of God. He says, if you knewest the gift of God, and who is he? Who is he? And who is it that says to thee, Give me to drink? Thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. It says, If you knew who you was talking to, and God, and the Spirit, the gift of God with the Holy Spirit, you would have asked for this gift of water. He said, He would have given you living water. So this woman is correct. Because Jesus had not died on the cross, she is correct for her to say, Lord, fill me. I'm asking for water. And this is what she did. The woman said unto her, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence thou hast this living water? So she starts to cry, Where is this water from? Where are you going to get it from? I don't see, you don't have any anything, any pictures. I don't see any dropping any buckets. Where are you going to get the water from? And she says, Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drunk thereof himself and his children and his cattle. He says, Are you greater than Jacob? This well, our father Jacob gave it to us, where we drink this water. Jesus said, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever would drink it, this water shall thirst. He said, This well you're talking about. He said, You will thirst if you drink this water. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall I shall I shall I shall I shall give him shall never thirst oh so if we drink this water we will not keep on coming lord fill me i'm thirsty for you we will never thirst but the water sh i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life jesus is saying if you receive this water i put the well in your spirit when you have the, the source of water in you, you don't look to heaven, Lord, fill me. No, this is the well itself is going to be in your spirit. Whatever you require, just draw, go to the well. Just go to the well and put, and bring some more water. You don't say, I'm thirsty. He said, you will never thirst. Jesus will never lie to anyone. So, so you, you understand here, this doctrine of, Oh yeah, I'm thirsty for you. It's an emotional doctrine. It's an emotional stance because it's based on emotions. Sometimes we we, we, we we might think we relate to God. If I feel close to God, I'm good. I must be doing something. If I don't feel close, oh, I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry for you. No, and these songs, you be careful the songs you listen because they will bring unbelief and make you start singing the wrong things, confessing the wrong things, and that's not right. Let's keep on going. Think for a moment. How much more of him do you want when he lives in you in his fullness? You are in the Father. The Father is in you. Become fully conscious of his reality. Quit trying to reach out to him 
or acting like a stranger and a foreigner, you are one with him. Hallelujah. The problem with many is their ignorance of the word. Jesus said, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. If we are the body of Christ, what does it mean to be the body of Christ? It's not a um, a union, a club. It's like, oh yeah, that's a group. No, it's like a company. No, this is a reality. We are actually his body, a member of his bones and of his flesh. These are his hands. These are his bones. How closer can you get? If he, if he, if he was not close enough for you to say, hey, we are united with him in spirit. He says, you are a member of his bones, of his flesh. He's the, we, you can't separate the head from the body. We are his body in the earth. We are him. This is a deep revelation. So we're not, how are you trying to reach out? He's already in you. you there's no reaching out for him. It, you know, because some songs are like, oh Lord, I reach out for you. There's no reaching out for God. If you're a Christian, you're not reaching out for God. If you're not a Christian, yes, you have to reach out. Like this Samaritan woman, Jesus said, if you knew who was talking to you, you would ask him and he'll give you water. But if you're born again, you already king. Oh, 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 oh. Let me show you another scripture. Let me show you another scripture. Righty, I am reading the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and verse number 12. It says that at that at that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus. You who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Christ. It is one time without Jesus, you are far from the covenants of promise. I mean, from the commonwealth of Israel, you were strangers from the covenant of promise. You had no hope. You're without God. And that's why you reached out to him and you became near by the blood of Jesus. Now you're near. You how it can get more nearer than that. There's no getting more nearer than Christ in you, the hope of glory. It can get nearer. He's already united with our spirits, with our bodies. He's one with us. He cannot separate himself. He can't go close than that. The Spirit of God lives in us, and he's I always use that as illustration. He does not live. It's like if you live in a house, the Spirit of God is not living in one room and you're living in another room. Or even you might say, oh yeah, yeah, the Spirit of God, me and the Spirit of God, we live in the same uh, in the same room. No, even that's even not even good enough. The Spirit of God is not separate. He is united with your spirit. You don't have two spirits. You don't have the Spirit of Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit and your spirit. No, you have divine unity. This is what Jesus brought: union with the Spirit, so that we can be one divine being. He is. He cannot separate himself from us anymore. He's so united with us. He's part of us. We are united in him. We are in him. He's in us. This is what Jesus brought. Let's keep on reading this. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's in Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It isn't a part or aspect of him that lives in you. It is the totality of his person. You are full of him. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your God's house, his living tabernacle. God isn't more in heaven than he is in you. You better believe this, for it will get rid of the dependency and inadequate sim 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 you know, syndrome. It's like, oh Lord, we're reaching out for you. No, he's in us already. We is in us in it already. We're not trying to do anything better. What can get better than Jesus down on our cross? This is what he brought. Union with the Father and with the Son. And yeah so it is a mistake to think the more we confess our weakness the greater he is in us no don't talk against the word your confession of inadequacy destroys your faith in your effectiveness in christ it is contrary to everything that jesus came to do for you for example how could anyone read what we read in our theme verse and still pray oh lord help me to overcome or like someone will say, we shall overcome someday. So we said, you are of God, little children. You have overcome them. Why? Because the greater one lives in you. It's about him. So you can't say, we will overcome someday. No, it's not someday. We have overcome. God of eternity has said, the greater one is in you. The battle is won. 
The word says you have overcome. Notice it is in the past tense. It is not a promise, but a done deal. A present hour reality. Your confession, irrespective of how you feel or what's happening around you, should and must be what the word says concerning you. Don't confess your feelings of inadequacy. Confess the word. Don't argue against the word. The word of God, if the word of God says, this is red, and when you look at it, it's blue. You're like, Lord, I, I can see blue. My, 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 my senses are telling me it's blue. But the word of God says it's red. Then it is red. <laughs> That's a simple explanation to, because God knows everything. Don't try to use intelligence, emotions. Use your emotions. Use your intelligence to respond to God. Don't let it not be there around. Your emotions and your intelligence are the ones controlling you how you should respond to God. No, no, no. Your emotions, your intelligence are tools to serve you, not for you to serve them. So you might not feel close today to God. Tomorrow you might be feeling, oh my God, I feel so happy. Hallelujah. I read the Bible. I prayed. I'm so close to God. And maybe the next day you, didn't, you probably woke up, you didn't pray. You probably woke up late, you didn't pray. You probably have not read your Bible for a week. And you're like, oh man, I'm thirsty. I, I hope God can hear my prayer. I wish to be close to God. <laughs> It does not make a difference. Even if you didn't read the Bible for two years, it doesn't change the fact Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit does not leave you because you didn't leave your Bible. It's like, no, nah, okay. No, it, you need to understand this is a reality that took place. You were born again. You can't be unborn. <laughs> you were born of God's word. That's who you are. And the actions that you do are not based on on how you get close to God. The word of God is given for us. You know why God gave us his word so that we can know who we are. There's no way we could have known about ourselves unless we study the scriptures. And so don't uh, put points or you I study the scripture. That means I'm closer to God. I prayed today. That means I'm closer to God. I didn't pray. I'm not close. I feel inadequate. I'm thirsty for you. Oh, I prayed. Oh, I'm more close to God. Nah, that's emotional. It's emotion. You're not living according to what God says you are. You take what the word of God says, irrespective of how you feel, irrespective of what you did. If the word of God says it is so, it is so. That's what it is. So I want us to take this confession together. I want you to say this after me. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. I am conscious of this reality everywhere I go. And I go in and with the Father who lives permanently in me. I'm his divine headquarters. In him I live and move and have my being. The world is subdued before me. Glory be to God forevermore. You can study further in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. John chapter 1, verse 16. And you can go through the whole Bible in one year or two years. Pick a plan that works for you. I'm just put the scriptures in here. Amazing. I hope you've been blessed by today's Bible study and devotion. Thank you once again for being part of it. If you're watching this and you're not born again, you must be thirsty for God. You have to reach out for him. And he says, if any man thirst, let him ask and I'll fill him. I'll give him the gift of God and out of his belly shall flow rivers. And all it takes is for you to call on him. Believe he died for you on that cross. Believe that God raised him from the dead. He says, then you receive eternal life. Then you receive the gift of the Spirit. It's as simple as that. So I want to lead you in this prayer of salvation. So you can be born again and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to say this after me. Um, let's make this comfort prayer. Just say, oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me. And God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you said that prayer, you're born again. Out of your belly flows rivers. You now have to call on him again. He's already answered you and he's at, he has filled you. And you need to know, to know his word. 
that's why in this channel i have so many videos doing bible studies learning the word of god make sure you subscribe there's so many videos that will bless you tremendously and build your faith super strong welcome to the family and for everyone else that's watching i want to pray with you no matter what you're going through no matter what's happening in your life i want to join my faith with your faith you know only god can answer prayers and when we come together in faith we can make changes so i want to pray in the mighty name of jesus no matter what you're going through the favor and the blessings of god will rest upon you if there's anyone that's sick amongst you i pray for health and healing that they may be healed from the top of their head to the tips of their toes i rebuke that sickness from their body i rebuke infirmity from your body be healed be made whole you devil of darkness you get out of their bodies in the name of jesus be healed and made whole in jesus name you walk in strength you walk in health in jesus mighty name and whatever problems whatever problems you're facing the solution of the spirit of god is made available to you you receive answers from god you if the wisdom of god leads you in exactly what you need to do in jesus name amen wow 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 thank you for being part of this i have many videos coming up make sure you go watch out more videos on the channel make sure you comment i want you to leave me a comment in the in, the, in this comment section what has god made you confess the word who are you in christ my confession the greater one lives in me i have overcome them because greater is he that is in me so confess the word don't confess inadequacy oh lord i thirsty for you no, no no don't put those comments here comment i'm more than a conqueror comment i got the life of god in me irrespective of what you feel put it in the comment section that's how you confess the word of god that's how you agree with god so make sure you do that. Make sure you like this video. Share it with your friends. That's number one. Go on Facebook. Put this video. Put it on your WhatsApp. Make sure your friends can get blessed too. So until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous. It's on YouTube. God bless you.